everybody. Welcome to Discovery Reading today. Hopefully this finds you well. Here we're going to adjust our camera just a little bit. Perfect. Today we have a really cool topic. We're going to be talking about, about bears. Okay, so I'll read you the titles of our books really quick that we're going to be reading. We're going to be reading Touch the Sky by David Bedford and Jane Chapman. And we're also going to be reading Just One More Swim by Caroline Pitcher and Jenny Jones. Okay, well, we'll get right into it. Okay, again, so this is Just One More Swim and it's written by Caroline Pitcher and Jenny Jones, and it's published by Paragon, Paragon Publishing. Big Bear's tiny cubs were safe inside her snowdrift den. The cubs woke up, they yawned and stretched. They turned their heads towards the sound of the ocean. Big Bear stood up, sniffed the air. She lumbered out toward the water. The cubs scampered after her, blinking at the dazzling world. Big Bear padded across the ice. She stopped and dug a hole. She dipped in her pot and scooped out a fish. The cubs did just what Big Bear did. One dug a hole, the other pounced on the cloud of white and frightened off the fish. The cubs squabbled, they fought, they tackled each other and tumbled and rolled over and over and over in the snow. They ran and raced on their snowshoe paws and tummy tobogganed on the ice, but then they stopped and stared. What is that? they asked. The cubs trembled as they gazed at the blue-green water ahead. Every morning, Big Bear coaxed her cubs a little further towards the ocean. And one day, Big Bear and her cubs slowly and carefully made their way to the water's edge. Big Bear gently slid into the icy sea. The cubs jumped up and squealed. Come back, they cried. But Big Bear swam out strongly to an island of ice in the waves. The cubs waited for her, shivered on the thin ice. They watched sails curve over the rolling waves and saw silverfish flip and spin. The water rippled. The cubs patted it, but it wouldn't stay still. Then they put two paws in and pulled them back out again. to her cubs to swim over to the island. Come to me across the ocean, she urged. Up in the air, the, the seabirds were crying, swim, swim. You can do it, called Big Bear. I know you can. Swim, swim. And they did. Before they knew it, the cubs were swimming too. Under the water they went, twisting and turning in the awful marine sea. Up to the top of the water they swam, passing a narwhal with his sword and a whiskered walrus too. Then they dived down from on high, cutting through the waves. This one is the narwhal. Oh, this one here, I believe. The cubs paddled with their powerful paws over and under the arctic waves. They splashed and thrashed and somersaulted through the icy water. So this is what we do. We can swim too. Then 
They paddled and swam until Big Bear insisted, come out now. The cubs pulled their weary bodies onto the ice, shaking the rainbow drops all over Big Bear. Then Big Bear led her cubs to watch the juicy blueberries grow. The cubs ate and ate until their muzzles and paws turned blue. Big Bear sprawled on her back, paws in the air. She enjoyed the sunshine on her damp fur. But the cubs had other ideas, and as they headed back toward the water one more time, Big Bear smiled as she heard their call. Just one more swim. And that is the end of that book, Sad's Just One More Swim again by Caroline Pitcher and Jenny Jones. We're gonna talk about Porter's fur for a second. Okay. So this fur, let's see if we can get it in the light in a good way. This is a polar bear's fur. Their fur isn't actually white, it's nearly see-through, but kind of in contrast, it looks white. This one is looking a little bit more yellow just because it has been touched so many times by patrons. But this fur is really special because it's very, very thick. It does have a double layer when you put your fingers really deep in, you can feel that undercoat. And actually polar bear skin is black. And so they have that skin to attract the sun and then this thick top coat to lock it in and keep them warm. Keep them really, really warm. So this is our polar bear. These are, when we show our samples at the museum, they don't actually have black skin. The color was kind of tanned off, but they do have black skin. Polar bears are awesome. They can smell their prey up to 20 miles away on top of the land and under the water, they can smell their prey um, up to a mile. Have I ever seen a polar bear in the wild? No, I have not. Cool, so this is our polar bears. I'm gonna go grab our book really fast. Our next book is actually one that I forgot we had, but it is this one. It is Bear is Not Tired. And so, it is by Sierra Gavin, and we're reading this book with permission from Penguin Publishing House. Bear and the ducks lived together under the same roof. They were one big happy family. Sometimes Bear forgot that he wasn't a duck. He hardly noticed the difference. Then one morning there was a sharp chill in the air. The ducks don't mind, but the cold tickled Bear's nose. It could only mean one thing. Winter was coming. And that meant it was nearly time for Bear to go to sleep. He had been having so much fun, he'd forgotten all about it. Ducks don't sleep through the winter. Bear knew they would carry on as usual. He didn't want to miss out on the fun. He even had his winter clothes all ready. So Bear decided to stay awake. After all, he wasn't feeling even the least bit sleepy, but the ducks began to notice a change in Bear. He kept falling asleep at the most inconvenient times. Bear tried to think of ways to stay awake. The ducks tried to help him. Every 
every sound was a lullaby, the rippling of water, the hum of the washing machine, the tap, tap, tap of baby duck's feet. Bear was so tired, nothing made sense anymore. Mama Duck said Bear couldn't find who he was. Bears are bears, and bears are supposed to sleep in the winter. She promised him he wouldn't miss a thing. Feeling reassured, Bear finally fell into a deep sleep. The ducks carried on with their usual winter activities. Included Bear whenever they could. Even Duck found a way to keep him close. <clears throat> then one morning, Bear sat up and opened his eyes. It was spring, and Mama Duck had kept her promise. She even had photos to prove it. Again, that was Bear is Not Tired by Sierra Gavin. This is a list permission from Penguin Random House. The next bear that we want to talk about just for a second is one we have here in Utah, our black bear. And we've talked about this one before. This is our black bear head. These bears are super common, they're not endangered. And they're really common throughout all of North America. Um, these bears are primarily um, herbivores, although they are omnivores. They do eat meat, but they are primarily on a plant-based diet. So they eat lots of berries and fruits, and they also really like roots and digging, um, digging up vegetables from underground, but they do eat a lot of roots. So this is our black bear. It is kind of a misnomer that they are completely black because you can see there's a big light brown patch behind this bear's ear and the front of his face is also brown and so a lot of the times they are uh, a light brown color but they can be black. So this is our black bear. The next bear that I want to show you is the grizzly bear. Do they have back teeth behind the big ones? They do, their teeth kind of look like ours. We can't really show you very well because those teeth actually are not real. So his mouth doesn't have a real tongue either. Um, but yeah, they're far and back. You might be able to see a little bit on this one, but it's not very camera friendly. I don't know if you'll be able to see. But this is the grizzly bear. In the continental United States, these bears are protected. You are not um, permitted to hunt them, but in Alaska, you can. It is a controversial issue as to whether or not that should be okay or not, but they are not endangered. There are really over 50,000 of these grizzly bears in the United States. Um, and a few cool things about them, they can be eight to nine feet tall when they're standing up on their back legs. They also require a huge amount of territory, which is part of the reason why they're protected in the United States, is because they can span, they need a range of sometimes 600 square miles to travel around. So they have a huge range of land. And these bears are normally solitary. They're normally alone and by themselves, except for when you would see a mama bear with her cubs. And her cubs can stay with her for a very long time. Grizzly bears have been known to keep their cubs with them and nurse for up to three years sometimes. So their cubs can be with them for a very long time. So yes, this is our, our grizzly bear. You can kind of look at the colors, see if we'll get the light with us. They're kind of a, kind of have some blonde hair, some light brown and dark hair. And yes, these bears, although they are so big, they can also run 30 miles an hour. The black bear on the other hand, if they are skinnier, they can run about 30 miles an hour, but the grizzly bear can run 30 miles an hour, partly because they're just a bit bigger in size. 
but that's pretty much all we have for today you guys thanks for coming and listening to us read um hope you guys tune in tomorrow for life science live at 11 it's going to be really really good and again for those who are watching this not live feel free to comment your questions and we'll be able to get back to you soon but i hope you guys have a good day thank you